Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wood Forest Bank Stadium here in Shenandoah tonight for Thursday night football. We've got a pivotal 13-6A district encounter here between the Grand Oaks Grizzlies and the visiting Conroe Tigers. It is senior night here tonight for Grand Oaks, and we thank you all for joining us on this live stream and as per custom for all the Conroe games this year. I am Jeremy McGrail, joined by Sam Ulrich here in the booth, so you get a tandem broadcast tonight, which is always better and more fun. Sam, welcome. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Uh, pumped up for this Thursday night game. Uh, Conroe coming off their bye week last week, so they're ready. They're nice and fresh. Coming off a tough loss to New Caney, but that bye week helped them settle in and got some key guys returning from injuries this week. We got a uh, starting quarterback, Christian Nunley, who is going to set to return at quarterback. And also you got wide receiver Nigel Lede coming off of that concussion that he uh, had gotten previous week. So this Conroe team looking healthy and looking good. Yeah, good to see the Tigers getting some guys back healthy. It's like you never want to see injuries and guys go down and the team not achieve what they set out to just because they get hit with so much adversity. And Tigers have certainly dealt with that this year. And they got some help from this team that they'll be playing here tonight last week in the form of that 9-6 to six win over New Caney that turned quite a few heads around the district. That was a result that maybe, at least on paper, you, you would not have projected that, but Grand Oaks emerged with the 9-6 to six win, and that gives Conroe just the slightest mm -hmm. slivers of hopes of holding on to kind of that playoff dream, and Grand Oaks is still kind of in there as well if everything falls just right for them. The Grizzlies only have two more district games remaining, uh, including this game here tonight. They've just got Cleveland left after they play Conroe. They played eight games already. Uh, so both of these teams, uh, thanks to that uh, surprising Grand Oaks win over New Caney last week, still alive in the playoff race that we have to say College Park is in the driver's seat for securing the fourth playoff position at this point. We'll get more into that as we get into the broadcast here tonight. Coming up here in seconds, we're going to have some sponsor videos and commercials before we'll be coming back to you as the teams emerge from the locker rooms, run out, and we get started here tonight in a little over 12 minutes. Again, Thursday night football under the lights here at Wood Forest Bank Stadium. Hello Grizzlies. I want to tell you about some of the projects in Bond 2023 that impact the Grand Oaks High School feeder zone. Proposition A includes two new schools that will impact our feeder zone. A 7th, 8th, and 9th grade campus will address capacity issues at York Junior High and Grand Oaks High School. An elementary school is included to relieve at Bradley, Hines, Snyder, and Clark. In addition to Ford Elementary, adding classrooms for special education and fine arts, increasing the school's capacity by 100 seats is included along with addressing infrastructure improvements at Burnham Woods, Broadway, Cox, Snyder, and York. All campuses will be impacted by safety and security upgrades, technology infrastructure, and new buses. Proposition B includes technology device upgrades for all campuses. Proposition C includes a gym for Ford Elementary and updates to the Otwell Ag Barn that serves Grand Oaks and Oak Ridge High Schools. An outdoor pool and natatorium mechanical updates are projects in Proposition D. Learn more and get the facts at conroeisd.net forward slash bot. Go Grizzlies!
This is Donnie Buckaloo with Buckaloo Chevrolet. After two and a half years, I'm proud to say we have new Chevrolets in stock today and are receiving new inventory daily. At Buckaloo Chevrolet, what you see is what you get. We don't charge market adjustments or added equipment you don't want. The price you see is the price you pay, so don't pay over MSRP. On I-45 in Conroe or shop BuckalooChevrolet.com. It's a better buy at Buckaloo. It's not enough to be the leader in robotic-assisted procedures if we're not by your side for every step of your recovery, guiding you back to what makes you, you. Because it's not enough to replace your knee if we're not getting you to the moments that can't be replaced. Memorial Hermann, advancing health, personalizing care. Shopping for a new or used vehicle? Or just looking for a place for good, reliable service? Go with the name you know. Gullo Ford, Gullo Mazda, and Gullo Toyota. The Gullo family has been serving the Conroe Woodlands area since 1970. So the next time you're shopping for a new or used vehicle or just need service, do yourself a favor and go see Gullo Toyota, Gullo Mazda, and Gullo Ford. Or log on anytime at GulloAuto.com. Gullo, let's drive. What if cancer could be prevented? At Houston Methodist, we're researching a drug that blocks cancer cell regrowth, stopping aggressive breast cancer from spreading. We're also at the forefront of researching a cancer vaccine for a future where it never develops at all. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. For over 40 years, Wood Forest National Bank has proudly supported the youth and schools of this great community. Our bank has grown through the years, and Montgomery County is our home. With over 30 convenient branch locations right here in Montgomery County, we are your community bank. Next time you're in the area, stop by and say hi. But for now, sit back and enjoy the game. Good evening, Tigers. I want to tell you about some of the projects in Bond 2023 that impact the Conroe High School feeder zone. Prop A includes three new campuses that will impact our feeder zone. A new Conroe Area High School is planned to address capacity issues at Conroe and Caney Creek High Schools, while a new junior high and new intermediate will release Stockton and Moorhead junior highs in Bosman Intermediate. Infrastructure improvements will also be addressed at Anderson, Armstrong, Bosman, Conroe 9, Cryer, Giesinger, Houston, Patterson, Pete, Reeves, Rice, Runyon, Stewart, Travis, and Wilkinson. All campuses will be impacted by safety and security upgrades, technology infrastructure, and new buses. Prop B includes technology device updates for all campuses. Prop C includes gyms for Anderson, Giesinger, Reeves, and Rice Elementaries, and an Ag Barn to serve Conroe and Caney Creek high schools, an outdoor pool and natatorium, mechanical updates, our projects, and Prop D. Learn more and get the facts at conroeisd.net backslash bond and Sikkim Tigers. And welcome back to Wood Forest Bank Stadium. Back with you live here, waiting for the teams to emerge from the locker room and run out here. We're a little over six minutes away from kick. Welcome everyone just joining us on this YouTube live stream tonight here on the Connor ISD Athletics channel YouTube. Encourage you to follow our channels from both Wood Forest Bank Stadium and Moorhead there on YouTube and support the great work being done at these games with these live streams and these student athletes at all the schools here in CISD. Hard to believe but we're just a few weeks away from state playoff brackets so all these games extremely important.
Sam, just moments away from kickoff, and we got orange and blue smoke coming out of the Grizzly Bear down there as the Conroe Tigers have already made their way out down the sideline. Get the Grizzlies out here and work our way towards the opening kick tonight. Come back to you for that coin toss after the national anthem, of course. Senior night here for Grand Oaks. Sam, should be a fun game to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And, man, that, that hype video, I'm pumped up right now. Uh, this is a very pivotal game in the playoff race. Uh, team that loses tonight is virtually eliminated from that four seed because one, two, and three are basically locked up with you know, Willis and the Woodlands fighting for that one seed. We'll see that game next week. And then Oak Ridge solidifying themselves right now as the three seed. And right now, College Park in that four seed, but anywhere between you know Conroe, Grand Oaks, New Caney, and College Park all fighting for that four seed. But as of right now, College Park, College Park controls their own destiny. If they win out, they make the playoffs. They can afford to lose one game, but it's going to more than likely come down to that last game between College Park and Conroe for that last playoff spot. But yeah. these teams got to take care of business tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get into some of those possibilities during the game here tonight as the teams huddle and get ready to line up for the national anthems. We'll cut away for that briefly and then get back to you for the opening kickoff. Yeah, the order of business, very simple for both of these teams here tonight. They've got to win every game they have remaining to give themselves a chance. So it all starts here tonight. Grand Oaks coming in with momentum after having beaten New Caney a week ago. Got to keep it up tonight, whereas Conroe can keep themselves alive by coming out here tonight and securing a big win themselves. Right, Sam, with that national anthem, we are ready to line the teams up here at midfield, come out and see who is going to start with the ball tonight. Talked a little bit about this initially in the pregame, but the Connor High School Tigers getting healthy right when they need to here at the regular here at the end of the regular season just to keep themselves alive in that race for the fourth playoff spot. You mentioned a second ago, point very well made, that you have the Woodlands and Willis at the top of the district will have that battle for the district championship next Thursday night right here in this same building, and I'll be on that call. Third place, Oak Ridge looking very solid and comfortable there right now, which leaves only one spot up for grabs in the district. College Park controls its own destiny at this point. They've got to win two out of their last three games, uh, and they'll be in the playoffs. However, there's some... I guess you could say a little bit wilder scenarios. They could kind of switch up how that ends, but simple order of business here uh, to keep it simple and not uh, spin too many heads is that both Grand Oaks and Conroe High have to win out all their remaining games. Grand Oaks only has two of them uh, to go here. They've got tonight's game and then Cleveland. That's it. Conroe High's got Grand Oaks here tonight, then Cleveland, 
and then College Park to end the regular season here in a few weeks. Then it'll be playoff time, and obviously all must-wins for Connor Ohio coming out of their bye week here tonight. Didn't play last week. In other action around the district, you had Oak Ridge beating Cleveland 61-6, the Woodlands beating College Park 49-0, Grand Oaks securing that big win over New Caney 9-6, and then Willis beating Caney Creek 63-9. Coach Sean McDowell for Grand Oaks getting his first really banner victory last week against New Caney, uh, bringing their record to 2-4 and four overall in district, but a a really big win for this program, especially in Coach McDowell's first year, just looking for kind of that flag planting win, if you will, in district to set the program off in the direction that you know he wants to go. Very successful head coach at Foster High School down in Richmond in the southwest part of town. Kind of bringing his know-how from Fort Bend County up here into Montgomery County now at Grand Oaks and I've said previously I feel like for Grand Oaks just with all the ingredients they have that it's a matter of time uh, before they start doing some special things as a program, in my opinion. I feel like they've got everything they need and just a question of getting all the pieces moving in the right direction, which, of course, takes time and patience to get all that working. But, yeah, program that I feel like has a really bright future. And Conroe High on the other side, gone through some adversity this year with injuries, but they may be getting healthy here at the perfect moment to give themselves a chance here to stay alive in the playoff race. It'll be Conroe getting the ball here first tonight. Sam as Grand Oaks lines up for the opening kick. Yeah, this Conroe offense, you know, most of the season been missing, you know, the quarterback and the running back in. They're undefeated when Christian Nunley and Jermico Green both play together their first three games. And so that's something we'll be looking forward to tonight. Yep, opening kick returned out, well covered by Grand Oaks. They're going to stack that up right at the 20, so excellent job of covering that kick by the Grizzlies. So for Conroe and this offense, we're expecting to see Nunley come out here to start at the quarterback position. And they'll be 80 yards away in their own territory here to start. Grand Oaks playing some pretty strong defense here the last few weeks, and they're going to have to keep that up here tonight against an athletic Conroe High School Tigers football team. Yeah, it looks like we see, uh, looks like Cam Nunley is back there right now, but I also yep. see Christian Nunley lined up at wide receiver. Yeah, interesting. So quick throw out, double pass on brother to brother, throwing back, just going to fall incomplete. Intended receiver there is Jermico Green, a junior. Do see a flag down. Flag is down, so how about that? Cam Nunley to Christian Nunley on the double pass to start the game. And Sam, I remember seeing this in other Conroe games. Like, they're not afraid to dial up some of those oh, trick no, plays. Oh, no, they, they love, love the trick plays, and I love when they run them. Uh, really helps their offense sometimes when they're a little stagnant, trying to move the ball down the field, and it really uh, gives them a spark. And this is a game for Christian Nunley where he played at Grand Oaks last year and then transferred here to Conroe. And so... This is this is what I like to call Christian Nunley's haunting game. He's gonna haunt the team he formerly played for. You know, it's it's how they you know in the, the prof professional sports it's kind of that little extra meaning for them when they play their former team. Yeah, you think there might be a little extra motivation now. Christian Nunley is gonna line up at the quarterback position, split back shotgun here on second and ten, three wide receivers. He's going to switch up the play, it looks like, at the line of scrimmage there. Going to fake the handoff, quick throw out left. It's basically kind of a sweep substitute when you run that play. Pick up about five or six yards, so a good positive gain there to bring up a third and short here coming up. Looks like it would be about a third and three. Early in this game, one of the big keys is going to be which team is going to be able to convert them, the, the big third downs to keep moving these drives forward. Yeah, absolutely. Not sure what kind of game we're going to see tonight. Points to a little bit lower scoring, but maybe we'll see more points than we're thinking. Pressure applied to Nunley in the backfield, and Grand Oaks is going to swallow him up for a big loss. That's going to bring up a fourth down, so 
Huge stop here to start for this Grand Oaks defense. Well done by the Grizzlies to get off the field at their first opportunity of the night. Never want to give up that momentum early on, and as a result, they should get some decent field position out of this, provided you have a clean change of possession here, as always. Tigers in the punt formation, of course. Good snap. No pressure applied on that punt, so the kick's going to hit the turf and roll just the other side of the 50, barely. So excellent field position for this Grizzlies offense to take their first possession of the evening here. 10.56 remaining in the first quarter after that change of possession. So Grizzly defense getting it done. Now the offense with a chance to come out here and establish themselves. Grant Smith, who's been the usual starting quarterback for the Grizzlies this year, not suited out here tonight. So get a little bit different look than what we're used to, or at least what I'm used to from having watched the Grizzlies previously. The handoff up the middle, first play. Gain a couple of yards. So Tristan Frazier on that carry. Has typically been deployed as a receiver, but gonna be in the backfield here to start this game. Pass complete out to the sideline from Carlos Alvarado is the quarterback here tonight for Grand Oaks, number five, a junior. Bring up third and two. They're going to move quick here. Try and use tempo. Four wide, two by two. Hand up the middle to Frazier. He's going to plow forward for first down yardage. Looking deep on the pass, has a man just behind the defender, not able to connect, just barely overthrown. Nice idea though, they had what they wanted coverage wise there, just couldn't quite make that connection. Julian Kent, the intended receiver there for Grand Oaks Jr. Quick throw out complete. Excellent tackle there at the point of attack. By number 18, Isaiah Pruitt, a senior for the Tigers. Excellent job defending there, tackling in the open field. Number four, Preston Cloud, a sophomore receiver on that catch. Yeah, and this is a Conroe defense whose specialty is stopping the pass. They have, I believe, the second worst rushing yards allowed in the district. But this is a Grand Oaks team who's, who isn't known for running the ball. They're, they're, they're pretty balanced attack, but, you know, get most of the yards through the air. And it's an interesting story we'll see throughout the night. It's Grand Oaks looking down the field. Slant route was on. It's going to be incomplete. So that'll bring up a fourth down. So... The Conroe Tigers are going to stand strong just like Grand Oaks did defensively on their first possession. So despite giving up that field position advantage to Grand Oaks, Conroe High doing what it needs to to keep points off the board here. Eight forty-eight on our clock here in the first. Punt is away. It'd be well kicked. It's going to be caught, fielded, and then tackled. Great job of coverage by Grand Oaks. Getting the job done in their kick coverage here early. Like 55, Jack Hughes was the first man down on that first contact. Yeah. 
So Conroe High, as they were on their first possession, pinned deep again here now. On their own 12 here to start the possession. Five wide, empty backfield, Nunley. Going to motion Green in now on that wide motion. Nunley kept it. The read seemed to be a give there, and they're going to stop him in the backfield. So good penetration by Grand Oaks. Always a tricky situation for when to keep and when to give there. Trying to stretch the defense horizontally by lining up in that empty set and then using the motion across the backfield there to green. That's designed to create openings in the defense. They're going to give it this time sweep left side. Good job of running actually by green there to even get around the edge. There wasn't a whole lot to work with there, but that was a a pretty excellent run by him. It's going to get the original line of scrimmage back plus a few yards to bring up a third and manageable. Still be about a third and six here, Sam. What are you thinking we see here? Yeah, probably going to see some sort of pre-snap motion, try to hit some guy on the edge. Uh, Conroe, definitely one of the highest using motion teams in the district. Love to get their their fast players out to the edge. And it was a big play by Dramico Green as he played the new Caney game, but he's coming off an injury. Like, glad to see him getting going early. Yep, quick throw out, right back to him. Makes the first man miss, turns the corner. He is going to be right on the stick. Again, nice job showing his talent there. Quickness in short spaces. I think we have some confusion between the referees. We got one holding up the, yep, they're going to converse about it we have one who signaled to move the chains and one other who was calling the fourth down so yeah. either way it was a very close call yep close call the chain gang was all over it they yeah, already moved and progressed things so they're on the ball here tonight apparently normally they they don't move unless they're signaled so i guess the official on that side told them to go ahead and move it but we'll talk about it here briefly we've got 755 on the clock here in the first no score on the board Again, it is senior night here tonight for Grand Oaks, so all those festivities were going on here in the pregame tonight. And hope you were able to see those Bond videos that aired during the pregame. It was pretty neat to see for both Grand Oaks and uh, Conroe High to inform the different areas on what's going on with those. So I encourage you to go and watch that back if you missed that and joined us a little bit later bond videos for both schools that were interesting and informative and just highlight the outstanding growth that we're seeing throughout the district from the very southern reaches where Grand Oaks is located to the northern area where Conroe High is of course so spanning the entire Conroe ISD district area it's just all growing Grand Oaks another chance here to get some favorable field position as the conference did move the ball short of the first down. Punt is away, going to be caught. Ball does hit the turf, but Conroe, or uh, Grand Oaks rather, gets right back on top of it. Return man for Grand Oaks is Donnell Frazier. So Carlos Alvarado in the Grand Oaks offense back out. We have uh, Devin Wallace in the backfield, sophomore tailback. Alongside three wide receivers in the set here. Going to go to Wallace for his first carry of the night. Going to plow forward. Good yardage. It's a good push by the Grizzlies offensive line there for about six yards. Bring up a second and four. Sam, we've seen this Conroe defense be vulnerable against the run more than once this year, and so you'd think that's where Grand Oaks is going to try and really attack and make Conroe prove they can stop it. Wallace again, better job by the Tigers there to stack that up before he can turn the corner, and that's more, much more of what they need to do here tonight to keep Grand Oaks from running wild. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, this Conroe run defense – Giving up the, the second most yards on the ground in the district. 
So that's something they're going to really want to work on, and they've given up the second most by, by a lot. I mean, the next third by about 400 yards. Yep, overhead snap. They're going to lose yardage for Grand Oaks, back them up to their own 40. Uh, they'll actually give them progress to the 48, but nevertheless going to turn over possession again. Bring up another fourth down. Thought this one maybe had a chance to be a KG one, and it's kind of starting like that where both offenses sputtering a bit here in the early going. High punt away. Going to hit the turf and take a favorable bounce there for Grand Oaks. Roll to about the 15, so the Tigers not catching any breaks in the field position department here to start, but still 0-0 on the scoreboard, and they've got a chance to come out here once again and get the football moving. You mentioned uh, those district stats with regard to defense very rightly, and Another area where Conroe High has uh, struggled defensively is just that pressure. They're last in sacks and tackle for losses. So a couple of those plays they've made here tonight are really big for getting their confidence going. But here is Nunley in the offense back out. Making the jet sweep, now throwing back left, green in space. He's got a chance. He's going to turn the sideline, get up to the 35. Nice design on that play. Sam gets all the way out. Close to a 20-yard gain there. Exactly a 20-yard gain on first down. Yeah, chunk plays. Uh, get your skill players into the open field. It's really glad to see Jermico, you know, heavily involved in this offense. I was told, like, when he played that new Caney game, you know, coming off that, that ankle foot injury, you know, hadn't really practiced much. L looks like he, you know, what, wasn't comfortable back there, but definitely looking comfortable here tonight. Yep, he is Nunley looking right side again, complete. In another first down, this looks like a nice formula for the Tigers to follow here in the early going. Get the ball out, get their athletes going in space. Green shows you just what this team has missed for most of this regular season with the short space quickness he has, especially to get around that corner. He's already made his presence spelled out there here tonight. Three receiver set, H back. Nunley looking deep. He's going to roll a little bit to the right now, go down to the field looking for his post, but just thrown underneath. There is a flag, however, down in the backfield. Holding. Number 63. It's going to go against the Tigers. From the previous spot. First down. As far as team defense goes in the district, these teams actually rate number four and number five Grand Oaks in the fourth position in total defense. Conroe right behind them in fifth place with Grand Oaks having played one extra game. Grand Oaks allowing 244.3 yards per game, where Conroe High allowing 266.7. Empty backfield, five wide set here for Nunley. Back to pass, looking for a jailbreak screen, but Grand Oaks having none of it all over it in the backfield, tackling for a loss. So with the Tigers moving from the south end towards the north end, it's going to bring up about a second and new Waverly situation here. Long way to go, 22 yards. Yeah, probably just want to try to pick up some chunk yards here. Probably go to Jermico here. Yeah, maybe look for something in the flat again. Always have to be aware of Nunley and his running threat. Extremely talented. And here he is keeping, stepping through some traffic, getting out just across the 40. Gets back some of the yardage, but of course that long way to go. Going to bring up a third in about 15, I think, after that run. Yeah, and that's what this Connor offense has really been missing, the ability of the quarterback to run as, you know, your last three weeks you've had Cam Nunley, the freshman quarterback, and, you know, you're just really trying to, you know, save him out there. He, he's, he's not as able to, to, to run as well as his brother. Uh, right now, but he's he's only a freshman. Still got a lot of time to grow, and he's he's got very good pocket sense from, from the last three weeks when I saw him. Back to pass, looking for the out route wide open. Receiver's gonna have plenty of room to turn it up. 
run out of bounds right around the 35 into Grand Oaks territory. And that's a player we've seen involved quite a bit in the times that I've watched Connor O'Hai. Jalen Mayen, the junior, talented junior. One of several players out here for Connor O'Hai. They can get it done in the open field. Now they're going to stay in this empty backfield set. Four receivers with an H-back. Motion into the backfield here, Green. Reads it in, keeping is Nunley going around the left side, but again, nice penetration by the Grand Oaks defense, cutting him down before he can turn that corner. It was number 20, Simon Smith for Grand Oaks. Excellent tackle. Perfect read on that by the defense. Yes, Simon Smith, that'll be a 32nd tackle on the year. One of the top tacklers in the district in the top 25. Yep, bunch set here four wide for Connor Ohio on second and 11. Nunley rolling right under pressure. Going to have to use his legs, which he gets the corner easily. And yeah, that's that plus one threat mm -hmm. that you always talk about with an offense that has a QB like Nunley who can do the things he can on the ground, which, of course, everyone on the Grand Oaks side is very familiar with. As he had a split duty with Grant Smith last year. They had a quarterback platoon going between the two of them. Nunley being a sophomore and Smith being a freshman at the time. Four wide set, bunch trips. Going to be a roll left for it. Nunley under pressure. Tough throw for him to make. Rolling left, throwing right-handed. May and yeah. caught it, but no gain. It's going to bring up fourth and three, and of course they're going to go for it. The ball is on the 28-yard line of Grand Oaks, Sam, so no choice but to give it a go. Yeah, and this is where you, you pull out the playbook and you put you put your best, you know, four to five-yard play. Uh, trying to strike early into this game definitely helps when you're the first team to score in a game that's going to be a defensive battle. Yep, motion man across, jet sweep. They get the ball to him. He's going to have the first down easily. Going to get that corner turn, makes a man miss inside the red zone down to the 18-yard lines where they're going to mark him out. Easily moving the chains, no flags on the field. Yeah, it's a nice was, call there, Sam. Yeah, it was a great uh, it was split backfield. And then you got Jermico Green on the right side laying a dude out. That's your running back making pancake blocks. Yeah, you'd love to see that with your skill guys out there blocking. Four wide set here. Quick throw out flat, but hits the ground intended man and was Mayen. Bring up second and ten. Subbing into the game now is Nick Medina for Connor O'Hai. Have not seen him with his hands on the ball yet, but yet another player who's got some nice wheels when he does get his opportunities. So keep an eye on him. Wouldn't be surprised to see him run a corner route here and maybe target him in the end zone. We'll see. Looking his way, he's going to settle down over the middle. Dangerous gets tipped Ooh. up. Could have been picked, so... Tigers getting away with one there. Yeah, dangerous after it went through Medina's hands. That's when you defense is starting to yell tip drill, and that could have been dangerous for Conroe, but that's a big sigh of relief as Grand Oaks forces a big third and long here, and if anything short of a touchdown feels like a little bit of a disappointment on this, this long, successful drive for Conroe. Yep, third and 10, four wide back pass, looking for the end zone. Ball is caught, good hands over the middle on the post. Down to the two yard line of Grand Oaks. Massive catch there for the Tigers. Yeah, and that's one of your senior leaders, Nigel Lede, uh Missed the last game due to injury, but back on the field now. Uh, he's one of those guys that makes those big plays and Conroe knocking on the door here. Yep, four wide set here. Nudley now motion into the backfield with Mayen, split backfield. He's going to fake it in. Now pitch it out on the option again. Very well covered in the backfield by the Grizzlies. They're going to stack him up for a three-yard loss. A little triple option action there from Conroe, but it didn't quite come off. Well covered by Grand Oaks. Yeah, that's fanta fantastic. Fantastic. 
uh, option defense there from, from Grand Oaks. Usually, you know, with all those different options, somebody will overcommit, but that defense staying disciplined. Yep, open receiver throwing to the corner, but can't make the connection. Had what they wanted coverage-wise there. And we have another third down here for Conroe High. Third and goal from the five. Minute 23 left in our opening quarter, still scoreless. For anyone just joining us, Conroe High received to start the game here tonight, had the first possession, so that would mean Grand Oaks gets first ball out of the third quarter. Going to flip back around the left side, trying to get Grand Oaks over committing, but they're just not doing it. Lede trying that left side. That play all about deception there, Sam. You're hoping mm -hmm. everybody yeah. goes with that initial ball motion to the right side, and then when you flip it back to the guy coming around the other way, there's no one there, but good discipline by the Grizzlies. So field goal attempt here to try and get the first points on the board of the evening. Be a 26-yard field goal with the holder on the 16-yard line. It's Arjit Singh, the senior, out to try and get the first points up. Good snap. Gets the hold down just barely. The kick is going to be no good, however. Looked like there's a bit of a struggle there, Sam, to get the ball mm -hmm. down. It's a clean snap, but something a little amiss there on the hold, it looked like, and that may have influenced the direction that kick went just wide right. So we're going to stay scoreless, 37 seconds on the board. Long drive, by far the best offensive drive of the game so far for either team, but coming up empty on the scoreboard. It's like we're going to get a little bit different look from Grand Oaks here. Quarterback position, Zach Rollins now out, a junior. He's going to hand it off first play, going right up the gut to number nine, Tristan Frazier. He's going to pick up a few. And that might have been the last play of the, the quarter. Yeah, believe you're right. They're going to wind it down here and we'll flip ends of the field. So scoreless after one here tonight between Grand Oaks and Conroe High. 13-6A encounter here between two teams just looking to stay in the conversation for that fourth place playoff position as the regular season draws to a close here rapidly. Been a very quick year. Uh, surprisingly, I feel like we just started now. In a month's time, it's going to be by district, and we will be in the state playoffs. Very difficult to believe, but been another excellent season season to watch here in Conroe ISD so far this year, and looking forward to some fireworks here for us down the stretch. And this being our opening game here of the current weekend in 13-6A, getting us kicked off. In other action around the district here, we've got Oak Ridge at College Park right here tomorrow night. And then New Caney at Cleveland. And then the Woodlands at Caney Creek. And the bye team in the district this week is Willis. Of course, next week you will have that titanic encounter between the Woodlands and Willis atop the district standings. And I'll be right back here with you next Thursday night to call that one. Can't wait for that. And here to start the second quarter, Grand Oaks first possession as Zach Rollins stays in at QB. Got movement, looks like it'll be a false start on Grand Oaks here, play one of the second quarter. Start, everybody but the center. Five yard penalty, take it down. You don't hear that one too often. Uh, some nice blunt directness from the official there. He said offsides on everyone but the center, or false start on everyone but the center. So second and 12 with that five yards marked off. Fourth 
four wide set back to pass as Rollins had the pocket collapsing around him and just kind of had to throw that, probably throwing that away more than anything on a different page from the receiver, but that was really a, more about survival than anything else uh, because that pocket rapidly closed around him. Mentioned a moment ago that this Tiger defense has struggled to affect the backfield all year, but doing a good job here this evening. And Rollins jailbreak screen, looking underneath that was intended. Oh, balls on the ground. Or Preston Cloud. Are they going to call that a fumble? I, it's picked up. On in the field. I did not hear any whistles blow the ball. They have not made any signals on the field yet. Look like a standard uh, kind of. Yeah. It'll be fourth down. There it is. Yeah, I was wondering why they let yeah. that one go because the play motion looked like your standard kind of jailbreak screen attempt. And it was dropped. Yep, intended man there was number four, Preston Cloud for Grand Oaks. Got to make that, that football move before. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's one of those plays very easy to get. Mm hmm your eyes upfield before securing the football, trying to figure out where that lane's gonna be. And that kind of play is designed to where it's like almost a punt wall forms up the middle of the field and it can be really dangerous to a defense. As Grand Oaks under some pressure there, gets the punt away. Good punt, caught, fair caught, I should say. And so this will be by far the best field position of the evening for the Tigers here to start a possession on their own 44. But Sam, as you mentioned a moment ago, you have to take advantage of your opportunities. Connor High, really good drive last time out, but couldn't finish it off with points. So they're going to look to maybe try and do some of the same things they just did, but this time cap it off yeah, that's with some pay dirt. Definitely a very methodical, long drive for that Conroe offense and you know, you get down there into the you're within your own two, three, and you weren't able to, to put it in there. That's a, a little disappointing there for the, the offense. It's green motioning into the backfield, going right to him up the middle, but stopped after just a yard. Nunley looking deep up the sideline. That was Lede off of his hands. Almost a really nice pass and catch between Nunley and Lede, but just couldn't quite do it. Going to bring up third and nine. Yeah, it was a nice little beautiful pass there by, by Nunley. Able to float that ball over the DB's head and just, I guess, a little out of reach of of Nigel, uh, he got his hands on it, but that is a little tough one when it's over the head. Yep, four wide receiver set bunch in a motion green into the backfield alongside Nunley. Nunley thrown across the middle, complete. Receiver rodeo tackled there about two yards short of the first down on the catch there for Conroe High. It's number 15, and who is that on your roster? That's uh, there, Zachary Allen. That's the, They had the good old jersey, jersey swip, him and Keegan, earlier in the season. But yeah. Conroe looking to be aggressive here, and looks like, you know, fourth and short, go for it. Yeah, but the way your defense is playing so far, why not? Yeah, go ahead, and you've got the explosiveness on offense. Now they're going to call a timeout and talk about it. be the first timeout the Connor High's use so they'll have two remaining 10:29 to go until half if you're going to go for it here you want to make sure you have the absolute best play called that you have access to in the playbook taking no risks yeah especially in the first half where you know obviously can't take the timeouts over into the second half and in a 0-0 ball game just points 
in general are going to be hard to come by as you know, no points put up in the, the first quarter. It's been a really defensive battle. Yep, defensive struggle so far, and we've seen signs from both of these teams that they're playing better defense lately, and we're certainly seeing that here to start the game tonight. Be interesting to see how we evolve here moving forward as we get closer to halftime. And if either side kind of figures out the formula. It will be Christian Nunley in this Tiger offense back out. No change of heart over there on the sideline. They're going to stick with their plan and go for it. Four wide receivers set here. Trips to the top. Green and Nunley in the backfield. Grand Oaks showing pressure. Bringing the blitz perhaps. They're going to back off a little bit, but do try and apply the pressure. Nunley has to throw into a tight window. It's going to fall incomplete. He's looking to throw to the flat. Excellent defense by the Grizzlies to get the Tigers off the field in the pivotal fourth down. Give their offense a chance to come out here and get the first points of the night. 10-24 to go until half. Impressed by how hard this Grizzlies defense is playing. Yeah, held New Caney last week to just six points at New Caney as well. So, you know, going in to New Caney and shutting down that offense, very impressive. Yeah, Rollins back out at quarterback and a hand to the talented sophomore. Number three, Devin Wallace, going to be tackled after just a couple of yards. I had the Grand Oaks and College Park game Earlier this season, it was a 38-28 to 28 victory for College Park. But despite the points allowed, I actually felt like Grand Oaks played really good defense in that game overall. And it was more a product of uh, some turnovers, I believe, and field position from what I remember in that game. But I commented on the broadcast. I'm like, they didn't play a bad game defensively. Just put in some bad situations as a team. Nice penetration there by the Tiger defense, cutting down Wallace in the backfield. Going to bring up a third and 13. Yeah, and on these third and longs, this is where the Conroe secondary really comes into play. You have a lot of talented DBs on this Conroe, this Conroe secondary, and it makes it hard for this Grand Oaks offense to try to get anything through the air. Yep, three wide set here for Grand Oaks back pass. Wallace looking up the sideline, double covered. That's going to be picked by Conroe. Very good coverage on the play. It's kind of thrown up for grabs. Number 21, Mark Jones, a junior. Comes down with it, just playing center field there. He says, thank you very much, I will take that. So 9.13 to go until half on that turnover. First turnover we've had this evening. This Tiger offense takes the field. You always feel like they're just they're one play away from breaking one just with the talent and speed they've got out there. It's five wide set here to start from Nunley. Now motion in green, jet motion. He's going to give it to him. Sweep left side. He's got some room. Cuts it up inside. Gets the first down. No problem out to the 46-yard line. So chain's moving right away. And those are the plays we've talked about that are just really difficult to defend. You spread everybody out, and it's all designed to create those creases and openings in the defense when you do that to stretch people thin horizontally. And it doesn't take much for guys like Green. He's going to go up the middle, spins off the first hit. What a run up the middle, loose into Grand Oaks territory down inside the 34. This is where they're going to mark him down. So another first down. What a run there by Green. Make it up for lost time running that yeah. like that. Just his ability. What impresses me so much is his acceleration once he gets to that second level. It's just who's going to be able to catch him once he gets to that second level. Spins off the defender and breaks away. Split backfield. Nunley's going to keep this time. Left side turns the corner. 
He's at the 25, inside the 20, down to the 15. Going to get behind the blocker, run it all the way in. Touchdown, Christian Nunley. There's our first oh, points of the evening. I think they might have called him. I think he might have stepped out. They're going to call him out. Yeah. Yep, they've got him marked at the six. I thought he was spiking it there in the celebration, but he was spiking out of frustration that he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, you know he wants that, that touchdown yeah. there. Yep, but very good run around that left side, uh, though, Sam. You know, it's the perfect kind of counter to what they just did with Green. They fake it to Green, and now Nunley keeps it, and that's exactly what this offense wants to do. Yeah, and it's exactly what they have been missing with having Christian Nunley out. Yeah, both of them out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bunch set here for the Tigers rolling right, looking to the flat complete. And that's going to get him into the end zone on the pitch and catch. Jalen Mayen on the catch in the flat from Christian Nunley. And we have our first points of the board. Connor O'Hai, 6 nothing on the scoreboard. 8.07 left to go in the second quarter. Yeah, and on that touchdown, it's just, it's been what Connor does all year. Uh, some sort of motion pre-snap. And what he does is allows, you know, the person in motion to get, build up some momentum and basically makes them a lot faster than the, the DB guarding them. So we'll probably see the replay here. As man goes into motion, it's just basically he's just got to beat the DB who's not, not already running. And so we're starting to see that a lot more in all levels of, of college football, not college football, just football in general, is the incorporation of motion and using guys that are faster than the defenders to, to outrun people. Yeah, exactly, and that's how you get favorable matchups, combination of alignment and that motion you just talked about to get those playmakers isolated. And yeah, if you catch the ball right near the goal line like that, doesn't take a whole lot to get it over from there. And just all about that design and isolating where you can best exploit the defense and running that high percentage play where there's very little risk in a play like that because you're isolating just through the play design to where there's not going to be a whole lot of traffic out there defensively. So Arjit Singh's going to put the ball down here for Conroe and kick it away back to Grand Oaks. And the closing schedule in the regular season for Conroe High, in addition to this game here tonight, will be Cleveland next week and then College Park after that to wrap up the regular season. The kick is away, and it's going to be into the end zone. No return for Grand Oaks, so they're going to start on their own 25. Quarterback platoon will continue here for Grand Oaks. Back to pass. Going to be complete out to the right side. So we have number five, Carlos Alvarado, back in at the quarterback position, the junior. It's been a rotation between he and Zach Rollins here this evening. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's, that's Alvarado in there. On our stat sheet, it says number five for Grand Oaks is Braden Dawson. So mm, I'm not okay. sure... Yeah, we may yeah, want to confirm that one. Yeah. They may have switched it up on us there. Another number switch is Conroe tackles in the backfield there for a loss. So I will apologize to the Grand Oaks viewers watching if I've got that one wrong, which we may have here. So good catch over there by Sam. Yeah, on the... We have third and 17 now on the down and distance. Four. 
Yeah, Braden Dawson listed as a sophomore here. Punt team come back out here for Grand Oaks on the fourth and 17. And again, Connor High going to maintain some good field position should they field this punt. Tigers coming after it a little bit, but not too much. It's line drive punt away. Going to hit the deck and take a nice bounce for Grand Oaks, actually, and take away some of that field position. Going to roll to the 31-yard line, so a nice result on that punt for the Grizzlies. And Connor High coming out here, three wide set to start motion out of the backfield now. Nunley rolling right under some pressure backside. Feels it and turns back to the left. He's going to have some space here now. Yeah, a couple flags on this play. Yeah, maybe some illegal blocks going on to yeah. get him changing direction. Usually not possible, good news. Yeah, possible uh, yeah. blindside block. Yeah, usually not great news for the offense when that happens. Not sure how Nunley sensed that backside pressure to notice spin away from it like that because he was turned completely away from it. It's a lengthy conference here by the officials trying to straighten everything out again. Multiple flags down on that play. Had one back around where Nunley first turned the corner and then another one further down closer to the sideline where he ended the run. Siconro like Heist players are backing up here already. Block number 13, Conroe. That penalty decline. Blindside block, Conroe number 68. From the previous spot, 15 yard penalty. Replay the down. So, massive penalty there for the Tigers to start this possession. And 6.54 to go until half. Maintaining that 7 to nothing lead on the scoreboard. Looking to extend it. They, had a, they were lined up for the punt, standing almost at midfield. Now with the better than expected punt plus that penalty, they're backed up all the way to their own 16 now. So four wide set here for Nunley. Looking deep, going over the middle now, checks it down, complete. Going to have good yardage, turns it out across the 40. He's going to have the first down, so excellent play by the Tigers, however. Yeah, I think there's a flag Another right around flag the, down. the 31. Not sure what this one is. Wait the official signal here. Good news for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. And a great play result there after that nice uh, check down throws, really mature play by Nunley. Was looking deep down the field and then just checked it down to the safe option underneath. And that safe option ended up picking up all the penalty yards back plus the first down. It was uh, first and 25 on that. A three wide set plus an H back. So showing a little bit of a power look here. Green on the sweep left. Makes a nice initial move to get into space. And wow, what a run. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Not going to catch him. What a run, Jermico Green. 
showed his patience going around the left side, found the little bit of a sliver he needed to get into space and then just kiss it goodbye from there, Sam. Wow. Yeah, Jermico Green, everybody calls him Chunky. Uh, he's been called that ever since he's been little. Uh, I, he actually played on my YMCA basketball team when uh, he was three and I was four, so he was called Chunky then. Uh, it's just a nickname he's had. But just turn on the burners, and this is what this Connor offense has been missing, is the versatility between him and uh, Christian Nunley in that backfield. Yeah, absolutely. Just that sudden ability to just be patient and then turn on the Jets like that through the hole to exploit that weakness in the defense. 14 nothing on the scoreboard to Conroe High. Big score there from the Tigers as we approach halftime. 6.20 to go. Oak Ridge now in a position of really needing to get that response before things have a chance to get away from them a little bit here. And I remember Grand Oaks being in a little bit of this kind of position against College Park earlier in the regular season in that 38 to 28 game I was telling you about, but they were able to kind of keep themselves in that game. They'll need to do the same thing here tonight against Conroe High. So it looks like the Tigers have found what numbers to dial here, Sam, with the offense lately. Yeah, and for this Grand Oaks offense, they're definitely feeling that absence of Grant Smith. They're, they're very strong sophomore quarterback, and his absence is definitely playing a role in this game. Yeah, anytime you are without your starting quarterback, and Connor High knows this better than anyone, it's like all those reps that those guys take with that first team offense, it just it's gonna take a lot of time to replace that because you work all spring and summer with one guy in mind to kind of lead the charge there on offense in the quarterback position. By far the hardest one on the field, of course, scheme depending to replace or to have to make a change at. Grand Oaks doing the best they can here this evening so far with that platoon we've been talking about. Looks like Dawson's going to come back out here and continue, the sophomore. <laughs> Again, Coach McDowell looking to establish the direction he wants to go with this program in year one. The expectations coming into this season, you would have thought for Grand Oaks would have been to, yeah, obviously do as, as well as they can, compete as hard as they can here in district without getting too crazy, of course, with those initial expectations and giving the program a chance to kind of stand up and, and really get going under Coach McDowell. I think if he has the time to develop this program that he'll do a really good job here just like he did down at Foster. run up the middle for a yard or two. Yeah, I definitely agree. Flat coming in late there. About the uh, the Grand Oaks development as their, you know, main quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, all sophomores. So this is a Grand Oaks team that has a very bright future ahead of them. Yep, and a penalty against Conroe is going to move the ball out to the 45. And there you got Devin Wallace, who's a sophomore, Preston Cloud, who's a sophomore, and then obviously Grant Smith not playing tonight. And Braden Dawson, sophomore, who's in the game now. QB, three wide set here, first and 10. Going to hand it up the middle. Gain about four yards. Now a Sepulveda on the carry there for Grand Oaks number two. Bring up second six. Movement, flags come in. Yeah, it's gonna in be the a free play. Offside's free play, yep. Throwing up for grabs, wow, nearly came down with it Did Preston Cloud despite being double covered. Yeah, and that's very heads up play. Five yard penalty. 
by Dawson there. And I'm noticing so far that Grand Oaks is staying far away from number 29 on Condor's yeah. defense. They're not looking his way at all. And for anyone who doesn't know, number 29 for Conroe, a junior Dorian Brew, who happens to be one of the top prospects in the country, who recently moved into the Conroe area. 6'2", 190-pound cornerback who's got a really impressive list of favorite colleges. He's got the likes of Texas A&M, Michigan, Ohio State on there. Yeah, he's originally from Notre the Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, he's originally from the Ohio area, so it makes sense that those power Big Ten schools are interested in him. Yeah, but I took note of that. He snuck the Aggies on there. Yeah. They're in his top five, apparently. Handoff up the middle. Sepulveda is going to have the first down. Good job opening up the space by the Grizzly defensive line. Nice response so far on this drive from the Grizzlies again. They have to have this. Well, over four minutes to go until half in. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, so it would be a really nice boost uh, to their momentum and morale if they can get some points over the goal line here ahead of half. Again, right back to the well in the running game, but this time the Tigers all over it, stack it up at the line of scrimmage. When you talk about program development in Texas, especially at the 6A level, it just takes so many pieces coming together for everything to work. It's not just about what happens in the field house. It's the community. It's the coaches. It's a lot of things coming together. It's the Conroe High does a great job applying pressure to that rollout to the right, forcing the throw to hit the turf and bring up a third and long. It's far from being just about what happens in the field house or on the field of play. It takes a village, as they say, to make it happen and to get a program up to the level it needs mm -hmm. to be at in this state to be a team that will contend consistently not only in district but then have a chance to be a factor on the area and even state scene as well yeah it's one of those sayings i believe rome wasn't built overnight no it was not and i was lucky enough to grow up in a program that's one of the very best in the state of texas so i was able to see all the things that went on there to really help fuel the program's ability to put team after team on the field each season to be in a position to contend. And it's just always interesting to watch these new schools like a Grand Oaks come online in the journey they go through to, to get a program established. It usually takes the better part of a decade for a brand new school to really find their footing It's made harder than ever these days, especially in the Houston area at the rate that new schools are built because you'll have school open and then within five to six years, their relief campus is opening. And it's like, wait, what? It's like, how are you supposed to? It's, yeah, very difficult. Uh, the idea of tradition seems very difficult to establish these days just with the zone boundaries for schools changing like they do and with the growth being so crazy that you're building relief campuses at that rate. Four wide set here, third and long. Back to pass, pumps looking up. The seam gonna be incomplete. Good coverage by Conroe. Intended man there for Grand Oaks was Julian Kent, a junior. It's kind of a dip of the shoulder from the quarterback and then looking to exploit it up the seam. Bring up the fourth down, 3.09 to go until half. Tigers lead 14 nothing here. We'll have a chance to see how aggressive they might get here if they can get a clean turnover in possession here. A little trickeration here. Trickeration on there for Grand Oaks, but stopped short, so Great field position now for the Tigers and a chance to to come out here 
and score again. And we just saw with Jermico Green and Nunley, it's like they don't need a whole lot. It's like it can be a very innocent looking running play and they're off to the races. Invite everyone here on the broadcast to stick around for halftime and watch the great performances from both of these schools and just support all the, the kids that put the hard work into it. It's Tigers come out, bunch set, four wide receivers, motion across the backfield, a lot going on in the backfield. Triple option pitch, very well done. Out across the 50, cuts inside, still on his feet. He's going to go down inside the 30, great tough run. That is Bryson Champagne, I believe the first time he's gotten his hands on the ball tonight. And he's been waiting for that. Great play all the way down to the Grand Oaks 30. And we've talked about this a couple of times here now, Sam, with that great design. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. they're going to rain on that parade. We have a – didn't realize there was a flag that had Man, come down yeah, on the far sideline. I did not see that either. And no one on the field did either. The players were all – Everybody, yeah, they were all ready there. to – But come all the way back and erase that. But mm -hmm. what I wanted to mention there, Sam, was that great design we saw again where you've got all that – all those moving parts in the backfield, so you get the defense going every which way, and then mm – -hmm. You have a, a gifted ball handling quarterback like Nunley who's able to pull the string on that and execute a perfect pitch. Look a bit like a wing T style play there with all that motion going on. Now just straight pitch to green, ball hits the turf. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Rule an incomplete pass on that, which it looked like a, a, a standard pitch. It was definitely looked to be backwards which whether it's overhand or underhand would be a, uh, a live ball when it hits the turf. But nevertheless, they blow it dead, so we'll stop at se second 15. Probably fortunate for Conroe, actually. Orbit motion into the backfield. Nunley looks that way, now looks back to the right. Wants the screen underneath to green, but incomplete. It's a middle screen to the running back. Bring up third and 15, 227 on the clock. Now, as I was mentioning a minute ago, stick around for half to watch the great performances from both schools and support all these student athletes. And we just mentioned a couple minutes ago, it takes a village and band drill team cheerleaders all very much a part of that when it comes to high school football in the state of Texas. Yeah, I know the, the Tiger Band received all superior ratings Tuesday at the Region 9 marching competition. And Nutley keeps it on the speed option around the left side into space. It's going to get... Smartly out of bounds, but short of the first down. See how aggressive the Tigers want to get here, but you would imagine they would punt it away, but let's see. Fumble forward, out of bounds. The clock was from the ready. Hmm. Yep, they're going to call it fourth and four to go. Offense not going anywhere just yet. Yeah, this is a position where you know, you're going to try to milk some of this clock and maybe try to draw this Grand Oaks defense offsides. Maybe run a little hard count. Nope, Nunley wants it. They're going to run a play. Going to be flushed out complete to the flat. Going to be a first down by plenty. Is Jalen Mayen on that catch. He was our, our touchdown scorer earlier in the game. Bold call there from the Tigers, but you like to see the aggression there, Sam, going for it. Yeah, absolutely at the point of the season where you've got to get things done and get them done in a hurry, so no fear. Minute and a half to go. Conroe High sitting on two timeouts. Bunch four wide set, two by two. Nunley back to pass, looking deep. Going to throw the post, has Lede open. If he can complete it, just overthrown. Yeah, just a tad. But Lede comfortably had oh two my. to three steps. They're wide open exactly what they wanted coverage wise yeah and looks like Jermico is going to check back into the game here on a second down might see sort of some sort of play revolved around him yep Nunley's just going to take a straight sweep around the left side going to run out of bounds as the flag comes yeah. in from the Conroe sideline. I think there was some, some movement on the line, just 
whether if it was on the, the offense or the defense. Yep, offside, so free five yards for the Tigers. Clock stopped at 117 again. Tigers have two timeouts remaining until half. Grand Oaks will get the ball to start the third. Four wide set now, motion out, empty backfield. Going to throw that slant over the middle. Great job of attacking the spacing in the defense there as the chains will move. And there's a, a couple late flags here. Yep, a lot of laundry coming in after the fact there. Some non-permitted extracurriculars going on. I'm sure guys just exchanging dessert recipes and that kind of thing mm -hmm. out there. So I'm kind of wait briefly. A player receiving some attention down on the field. Wait for this call by the officials, see how they, they end up sorting this one out. Sometimes in an effort to control a game, they'll signal unsportsmanlikes on both sides just to try and manage the tensions out there, even though it may be clearly one-sided. Mm -hmm. So massive penalty there in the favor of Conroe. Going to move the ball down to the 14-yard line of Grand Oaks after marking down that penalty yardage. One twelve on the clock after that. Four wide set here for Connor. Actually, five wide going empty backfield. Motion across now on the jet motion. Now coming back across the other way. Nunley rolling right. Wanted to throw the flat play was open. Another flag comes in. See if this one will go against Grand Oaks as well. Some good clarification there by the referee. Bring up second and 10 with exactly one minute remaining. Three receivers here for Nunley on this play. Orbit motion into the backfield. Gonna run that option again, pitches out, hits the deck. Conroe gets on top of it, though. Yeah, that's a scary play right there when you're running the option and you pitch it backwards and you throw it just a little bit behind the guy because that's that's a live ball. Timeout. And so yep. great play by Conroe just to be able to, to keep that and jump on it. Again, the Tigers trying to take advantage of the Grand Oaks defense there by getting them all moving to the right and then running that option back to the left side. So trying to use that orbit motion to distract the defense from what they really want to do, which is go the other way with it. But they get the pitch hitting the ground there so they're not able to catch the Grizzlies off guard like they wanted on that play. This is a defense. You're generally looking towards the wide side of the field on a play like that. You don't expect the offense to hit you yeah. back to the short side of the field, which is why... It can be a good thing for an offense to run, but there the pitch angle was just too steep, and that's why it hit the deck. Typically you want that to be a little bit wider in terms of that pitch man relationship to the quarterback so you don't have to get that sharp angle on, a, on the pitch back. Yeah, and this, I mean, it's, it's possible to pick up the first down as you just have to get to the four-yard line, but it's pretty tough to kind of fall within that, that area. It's usually either 
touchdown or short of the first down when it's third and this long. Yeah, and for the Tigers, I would look to either to get something done in the flat or just in an open area over the middle. And if you get the first down or touchdown, great. If not, then bring Singh out yeah. and get the three points. Possibly try to center the ball here. Yep, Nunley Fakin going to look to the corner. It's complete. Going to be a touchdown, Tigers. Good job of adjusting by the receiver. That's Nigel Lede in the end zone. Big, big play for Conroe to take into the locker room to extend that lead up to 20 to nothing now pending this PAT, Sam. What a job there. It looked like the throw initially could have been over the middle on the post, but Nunley trusting his receiver, Lede, to adjust to that ball. Yeah. After this PAT, we'll see the replay. And it's exactly what we're talking about, trying to get that ball to the wide side of the field where you have extra space to, to run. You're seeing, going to put that up and through. 21 nothing Tigers. There's a replay, Sam. Yeah, it's just, it was actually pretty good coverage there by, by Grand yeah, Oaks. Double covered, yeah. Lede was able to sneak in front of the DB there and just able to hold on to that ball with the, the cornerback kind of draped on him there. So give some big props to, to Nigel there, able to reel that in. Yeah, great job, and that's the one big advantage the offense always has over the defense. They know the play, the defense doesn't. Mm Seeing has the ball down, ready to kick it back to Grand Oaks. Don't believe Grand Oaks has had a chance to return one here yet tonight. Seeing's going to make sure that continues, boots it into the end zone. So the Grizzlies will take over their own 25-yard line, 43 seconds to go. They've got two timeouts left. We'll see if they want to get aggressive here, or if they just decide to and I call maybe a run or two and just take it on into the locker room as it is. Looks like it'd be Rollins out at the quarterback position here for Grand Oaks. He took a couple series off, so... Here he is handing up the middle around the right side. Yeah, Zach Rollins and Braden Dawson have rotated at the quarterback position here tonight for Grand Oaks. Looks like we will let the clock run to half. Grand Oaks looking to the sideline in no rush to try and run another play and risk a turnover. Yep. So it's Conroe High going to take that 21 nothing lead into halftime. I'm Jeremy McGrail, joined here tonight by Sam Ulrich. Thank you all for joining us. Stick around for halftime and then come back to us for the second half. Grand Oaks will get the first possession of the third quarter when we come back. But watch these student athletes here at half. Yeah, I know. I know the, the bands have been practicing as they just had their their district uh, regional meet. So I know Conroe advanced to to the area and they'll have that competition uh, this Saturday. So enjoy the halftime show here, and it'll be a good one.
Commission of Principal Dr. Tasha Smith, along with Dr. Curtis Moore, Superintendent of Conroe ISD, celebrating 130 years of excellence. Together, proudly present one of the oldest bands in Texas as it celebrates its 94th birthday this year. Please give a big welcome to the legendary Conroe Tiger Band. Under the direction of band directors Billy Skipos, Aaron Hernandez, Jake Rollins, as well as color bearer director Michael Henson. Section of the week. Thank you. 
alumni and faithful everywhere, stand proud to rejoice in the greatest high school fight song of all time, celebrating America's greatest generation from 1947 here at Ed Kennett's Tiger Boogie.
And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Please welcome to the field, the Grand Oaks High School Grizzly Marching Band. The Grand Oaks High School Marching Band is under the direction of Mike Blake, Jessica Kelly, Professional Director Jacob Corrales, Color Guard Director Chris Brown, Corley Coach Jim Young. The band is under the field direction of Head Drum Major Alex Gamaro, Senior Drum Major Hayden Pat, Senior Drum Major John Ferrara, and Junior Drum Major Grand Oaks Grizzly Twirlers, next state champion. 
And welcome everyone back to Wood Forest Bank Stadium. We hope you enjoyed that great halftime show. We've got both teams out ready to get our second half kicked off here with the Conroe Tigers enjoying a 21-love lead over Grand Oaks. Grizzlies will have the ball first to start the third quarter. It's Conroe High got the opening kickoff. And the teams kind of started a little bit cagey there, Sam, in the very early going. Offense is struggling to get things going before Conroe High found the way through by way of their talented backfield duo of Christian Nunley and Jermico Green kind of helping make a couple of those big plays. Nigel Lede also getting in on the action downfield in addition to a couple others there for the Tigers. And the difference has just been that talent at the skill positions, hasn't it, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. The three touchdowns for Connor, all by three different players. And, you know, you love to see getting these guys who have been out for a, a little bit for this team incorporated and getting two of those guys in the end zone, getting Jermico Green in the end zone on that absolute uh, big run over 50-yard touchdown, and then getting Nigel Lede, the senior wide receiver, into the end zone on a nice catch. And so, you know, you got to feel right now momentum swaying in Conroe's favor as this is a pivotal game in the playoff race. But one of the big things is Grand Oaks gets the ball to start this second half. Talked about it at halftime, looking to come out with a strong drive. Yeah, got to come out here on this opening series. Always super important out of halftime. You have a chance to go in there and draw up. A nice opening drive in terms of your scripted plays and just the adjustments that you try and make in the locker room. So we'll see what Grand Oaks dials up. We've been using a platoon here at the quarterback position tonight in the absence of their, their normal starter, a Grant Smith, using a junior and a sophomore kind of rotating at that position. We'll see if that continues here in the second half. That rotation has been between junior Zach Rollins and a sophomore Braden Dawson. Whereas Conroe High uh, has their junior quarterback, Christian Nunley, all the way back this week. Actually came out in the first play with his younger brother, Cam, the freshman in a quarterback, and tried to run a double pass from Cam to Christian Nunley that ultimately you know, failed to come off, yeah. but still cool creative points. And we saw that quite a bit in the first half from Conroe, just getting creative with the way they were calling their offense using motion creatively across the formation, trying to get Grand Oaks moving all kinds of different directions when they yeah, pulled the ball on some nifty triple option style plays and just trying to use, again, those matchups on the edge, on the perimeter with that skill talent to their advantage. And another thing I noticed there in the first half, Sam, is the Conroe High defense doing a better job of impacting the backfield than what we've seen uh, prior in some of the other games this year. Yeah, absolutely. As we mentioned, one of the big things in this game is can Conroe stop the run? And that's big, big been a big theme to this Conroe team is can they stop the run? And they've been doing a great job of that so far. And, you know, getting Grand Oaks to these third longs. And we know that this Conroe secondary is very elite with Devondre McGee going to TCU. We got five-star Dorian Brew on the other side. And then you also have Tyce Williams back at safety. He's heading to Texas State. So it's a very talented secondary for this Conroe squad here as we are about to start the second half yep got Arjit Singh out here putting the ball down for us Tigers gonna be kicking off from the south end of the field to the north and almost no wind out here tonight mm. Sam as I've looked at the flags throughout the evening warmed up a little bit today during the day so some good conditions now that that sun is down out here. Again, no wind to speak of tonight. This ball's fielded. First chance for Grand Oaks to get a return. Tipped in the left side, but Tiger coverage team all over that. And they're going to usher him out of bounds around the 20. Grizzlies going to set up shop 80 yards away from the end zone. We'll see who is the first to come out at the quarterback position in this half for the Grizzlies. That could be Rollins, number 10, is going to come out, take the first possession. He'll be joined by Frank Compton in the backfield. I think that's the first action we've seen from him tonight uh, that I remember. Been a few different running backs as well. 
Rollins back to pass, quick throw out to the flat, complete. Receiver goes down to ground after about four or five yard gain. Yeah, and that's gonna be the big thing for Grand Oaks this half is what do they do on first down? You know, we saw a lot in that first half. They had a, a majority of their third downs were third and eight, third or longer than eight. And that's when it's a big passing down. And we've, we've mentioned earlier the, how strong this Conroe pass defense is. And so just picking up chunk plays on first down, making it, you know, second and manageable and possibly even third and manageable is what's going to keep those drives going for Grand Oaks. Yep, shotgun set here, two receivers for the Grizzlies. Official's going to blow that one dead. Come in timeout, actually, by Grand Oaks. We'll talk about that, make sure they've got the right play. Grand Oaks, first timeout. Yeah, this is a huge possession for Grand Oaks as you're down three scores at the start of the second half. And, you know, if you want to make that momentum change, you really got to more than likely put up six here on this drive. So... And that huddle right there, probably talking about the next couple of play calls that they're going to want to run here. Maybe, you know, start with a hurry-up offense. Yep, with the deficit being what it is and now into the second half, can't afford any wasted plays. Got to take advantage of every opportunity, so they want to make sure they get this right here. Tempted in the run up the middle, but again, good penetration by Conroe, just shutting that down before he can go anywhere. Like number two, Tice Williams was the first to contact there for the Tigers' aggressive play up from the safety position, which you always like to see. Guy not afraid to stick his nose in there and make a play. Not at all. Tice is one of those guys who's just got that knack for the ball, uh, just flies around the field and great football IQ. Look at this Conroe secondary and just look impressive physically when they line up. It's like you can tell that there's some next level guys out there. Four wide set on the, the third and seven. Seems as if they called a delay game here. Yep, delay, back it up five. Third and 12 now. Chance for the Tigers to again create some pressure on the backfield. Force the issue with Rollins. See if they can collapse that pocket around him. That's what they're going to try and do with those ends. Flying up wide, but good throw by Rollins. Going to be complete for a first down. Out near the 34 is where they're going to mark him out of bounds. 33 actually. Yeah, Connor here running man-to-man -man coverage, and Grand Oaks able to just run a little simple slant across the middle and able to have a step or two on his man and able to get some yards after the catch there to pick up the first down. Yep, Julian Kent on that reception by the Grizzlies. Be it run up the middle by number 32, Frank Compton. Again, I didn't see him involved a whole lot in the first half, so maybe a little bit of adjustment. Appears to have some size to him, so maybe they were looking for a bit more of a, a power punch there in the backfield, which is what he delivered there. Six yard gain. Looking deep, but overthrown. Plenty of coverage in the area there by the Tigers, not really threatened on that one. Be back to a third and four. Yeah, and these are the more manageable third downs if you're Grand Oaks you want to have against this Conroe defense. Having the ability to, you know, come out and run the ball with confidence if you want to on a third down, opposed to being, you know, third and 12, third and 10, and more likely which would be a passing play. Yeah, four wide, two by two shotgun here for the Grizzlies. Back to pass Rollins, looking left. Pass batted down, broken up, looked like uh, Dorian Brew on that pass break up there. It looked like it initially had a chance to be complete, but Brew was on hand to break that one. Yeah, Grand Oaks coming out in the punt formation, but last time they came out in the punt formation, they did. They pull a little trickeration out on us and 
tried to uh, run for it, but probably won't see that here backed up into their own territory. Snap all the way back to the punter in a way. Nicely punted ball, good spiral. Going to hit the deck, take a favorable bounce for Grand Oaks and roll all the way down to the 12 is where it's going to be downed. So 88 yards away is where the Tigers are going to take their first possession of the second half. But job done by the defense there, Sam, to get that initial stop there, which is always key for a team nursing a lead to come out and get that stop. Don't give your opponent any reason to believe out of the locker room. Yeah, it's fantastic fantastic execution there by the Conroe defense. You know, you gave up that first down on third and 12, but the ability to come out after that first down, recover, and, you know, force that punt later in the drive really shows how, you know, this defense, they play with a sort of confidence of, like, you know, if you're going to beat us, you're going to you have to execute to perfection. The rare under center snap. Now a sweep going back the other way, misdirection. Green into the open field nearly had a touchdown run there. The last available defender to make the tackle there for Grand Oaks gets him down before he can just turn the Jets on. Again, kind of a wing T style play there with that sweep going back underneath the formation, trying to catch the defense off guard again around that short side of the field. So tight formation here. Nunley, empty backfield. Quick throw to the flat, complete. Be out across the 35 to the 36. On the catch, Bryson Champagne made one really big play in that first half. I believe it was a key third down conversion he made. Bring up second four. Three wide set here for Conroe. Green, right side sweep. Gets that first down and having not seen Green since last year, you forget just how important he was, or at least I did, how important his speed was to this offense. But seeing him back involved here tonight, you just see how much of a loss that was to not have him for so much of this regular season. It's a perfect fit in this kind of offense. Nice spin at the point of attack there, making the first man grab air and gets a couple of yards from not a whole lot. Yeah, and that's the big thing, big thing I've been seeing out of Jermico is the ability to make that first man miss. We've seen kind of his go-to move when he encounters that first defender is just, just spin off of him, and he's been executing that very well. Yep, Nick Medina subbing in now for Green to give him a breather. Split backfield, three receivers. Going to hand the sweep to Medina, left side. Just looking to get what he can. Not a ton there, but picks up a few. Out to the 49-yard line. Bring up a third and about five to go. Yeah, and this, this Connor offense, we can really see what they're trying to do, and that's try to get as much time off the clock as possible. You have a three-possession lead. You don't want to risk uh, anything ca catastrophic. Ca catastrophic. Yeah, catastrophic. That's the word I was trying to say there. Nunley back pass, looking deep. Has to pull it. Now he's just going to run it. And has the speed to easily get around the left side. Tiptoeing on the sideline. See where they mark him out. Looks like they're standing at the 42. So once again, not quite able to Houdini up his way up uh, the sideline to keep that going further, but... Just showing you that plus one ability he has with his legs. He is a really gifted athlete. He kind of just glides over the, the grass when he runs. Tight four receiver formation, roll to the right. Throwing the out route, strike, Lede. First down, down to the 24 yard line. Nice rhythm about this Conroe High offense overall right now and Really going back all the way to the kind of the late first, early second quarter. They've really found a good formula to move the football here tonight. 
It's green again, that spin move again. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, it didn't quite come off that time. No, you, you saw that first guy try to spin, and there was about two or three dudes that, that met him right after that spin, but still able to pick up one yard there on that carry. As you mentioned a moment ago, Connor, I just keen to lean on Grand Oaks with that three possession lead, but also, you know, obviously looking to extend that if they can. Empty backfield, just green up the wheel route, and I was going to throw a post back over the middle. It was pretty well covered by Grand Oaks overall there. Had some single coverage. Was not, it was a, a good throw by Nunley there. Gave his man a chance. Looked like the initial read on that play, Sam, as green had motioned. And they were looking to hit him on a wheel route, but the Grand Oaks defender ran with him. So Nunley looked to the post instead. And I fully believe Green was option number one there. Empty backfield. Pay very close attention to Nunley on a potentially a draw type play here. Nope, quick throw to the flat, complete. Champagne. Going to be to the 19, but well short of the first down by about five yards. See if Singh gets a chance to come out here and boot through a field goal. Yeah, any chance you get now if you kind of to extend that lead, you try and take. Yep, and it is Argent Singh going to be left hash mark. 36-yard field goal attempt. The holder is on the 26. Yep, Kellen Gregg, the holder. Let's see if they can get the hold down clean this time. Missed a field goal attempt first half. Good snap, good hold, line drive kick. No good, going to be wide left this time. So the score is going to stay 21-0, 507 to go in our third quarter. It's Grand Oaks take over possession. Be on the 20-yard line. Yeah, Connor there on that drive. Not able to put up points there, but able to take over four minutes off of that clock, which just takes away from the time Grand Oaks has to try to make a comeback in this game. Yep, and Rollins back in the gun, staying in at the QB position. And hand up the middle. That's an impressive run first down. Zach Compton. Or Frank Compton, rather. Some nice running ability. You wonder where he was at in the first half. Two wide receivers with an H back here. Shotgun. Again, Compton putting his shoulder down. Showing a good physical presence running the football. Yeah, Compton, the senior running back here on senior night, and so you got to know he's got a lot of experience for this team. Yep, doing a good job coming into the game as his number is called running hard. Giving his ball club a physical presence. Flag comes in far sideline. See whose fault that is. Offsides. Offsides. Grand Oaks pick up some. Freebie yardage here. Down. Talked quite a bit about some of the playoff scenarios in the first half. And, of course, to try and put it simply for both of these teams, we just said they've got to win out, both of them, to give themselves a chance. And what Conroe High has to avoid is any sort of head-to-head -head tie with New Caney, given New Caney's got that head-to-head -head So that is stacked up for just a yard gain, bring up a third down. New Caney having beat Conroe 28 to 18 a couple of weeks ago has that plus 10 advantage. So if there's a head to head tie break for a fourth playoffs position, then New Caney would obviously take that. Yeah, it's gonna be that big game next week between New Caney and College Park. 
Yeah, Connor High, if they can seal this win here tonight, as Compton tries to go up the middle, well stopped by the Tiger defense, can bring up a fourth and one. Good job defending. Whereas Conroe High, if they can get this one sealed up here tonight, they're going to be rooting hard for Oak Ridge to beat College Park tomorrow night. In yeah, order to they're going to keep gonna, themselves alive. They're going to be cheering for Oak Ridge this week, then cheering for College Park next week. Yeah, that's really the bottom line is for the Tigers at this point with all the adversity they've dealt with this year. They've got to win out, and then they need help on top of that. Mm hmm But looking like a well-oiled machine here tonight so far. Punt is away. Going to be fielded nicely caught, actually, there. That was a tricky punt to field. That's why he's back there, Nigel Lede. So Conor O'Hai going to take over possession. 24-yard line. Connor offense coming out here. Just trying to do what they did last drive. Just put themselves in a good position to score and take as much time off the clock as they can. Yep, Medina flanking Nunley there in the backfield. Going to ride in the sweep to him, hand it off around the right side. You feel like potentially there's another big play. Injury timeout. Coming for Conroe at some point here Offense. just because the Grand Oaks defense has been out there a long time tonight and you have to think that fatigue is going to play a factor as we move towards the fourth quarter here. Take brief timeout so a player can receive some attention down on the field. Yeah, and you had that, that bye week for Conroe last week, so rest it up, but also gives them the opportunity to not play a game. So, you know, they... Might be a little out of the, you know, constant playing for about three hours or so. So, but we're back out here. Yep. Yeah, needed bye week last week, just if nothing else, to try and get some guys healthy, which they've obviously come out here tonight and gotten some guys back into the lineup that we hadn't seen in a while. Huge key, especially when you're just completely out of options in the, the regular season in mm -hmm. terms of having to win every game you've got left and then get a little bit of help, too, from – some of the other teams in the district to, to have a chance at securing that last spot. Because as we mentioned, in this district, you've got a really strong top three this year between Willis, the Woodlands, and Oak Ridge, all in just phenomenal positions to be in the postseason. Obviously, if the Tigers can get in, then they're automatically a Division One team as the largest enrollment school in the district. But I called the Oak Ridge game last week, and that – that Oak Ridge defense is legit. And I think they have a, you know, they started off their season a little rocky, but I think they have, you know, they've kind of found their identity. They have the dual headed running back field of Frankie Arthur and Larry DeBose. Yeah, very talented football team at Oak Ridge. And they came into this year with some pretty big expectations given all the three year starters they've got across the board and playing up to that level. And Willis, of course, being not necessarily a surprise team, maybe a surprise in just how well they're doing, but not a surprise that they're one of the top teams in the district this year. Quick throw out, left side complete to Champagne, who's become more and more of a factor as this game has gone on here tonight. First down moves the chains, helps the Tigers keep protecting this lead. So again, order of business for Connor High is simple, win out, Get some help, primarily from anyone playing at New Caney, and then just hopefully they have a chance in that final week from their perspective against College Park. That's basically what the Tigers have got to be hoping for at this point. Just go into that last game with a shot. Motion out of the backfield. Nunley going to roll right under some heavy pressure. Nowhere to go, so he's got to take the sack on that first down play. Lose about five yards. If Conroe did get into the playoffs, into Division I, they would be matched up against Westfield in the first round. Yeah, it's the uh, common team they see, as usually they are the number two seed in the Division I. So they played Westfield the last two years now. 
Yep. Nunley, under heavy pressure again, uses his mobility to try and get away, but just too many defenders in his face there to get loose completely and bring up a third and long. Westfield, not quite what they've been the past few seasons in terms of being as strong as they typically are, but still very formidable opponent, of course. The Woodlands would play Spring High School in that other Division I matchup, and then if Oak Ridge makes it and they end up in the Division II bracket, this Oak Ridge is a team that can go to either division depending on whether or not Conroe High gets in. Empty backfield, Nunley rolling right. Like he was looking back towards Champaign again. Going to be a completed pass short of the first down, however. Yeah, Region 2 in both Division 1 and Division 2 figures to be very strong. Just extremely competitive bracket overall. Oak Ridge would potentially see somebody like a DeCaney in the first round. And then Aldean Nimitz would match up against the other representative in the, or would match up against, uh, it would be Willis against New Caney. And that's going to be Conroe High Ball on the end of that punt, recovering that. So the Tigers will take that. Yeah, here on the, the replay, ball was punted and Grand Oaks signals for the fair catch, but ball ends up on the ground and that's Keegan O'Dell who makes the recovery. I believe he is the long snapper. But excellent field position here for the Tigers. Excellent field position and a field position and a chance to put your foot down in this matchup. Nearing the end of the third quarter here tonight, really great opportunity for the Tigers to just put in a decisive touchdown here. Three receivers in the set with an H back. The motion green out, empty backfield, Nunley. Looking to the right side. So a little bit of a square in route underneath to Lede, attended receiver incomplete. Bring up second 10 down in distance. This Connor High offense doing a good job design wise of just using the entire field, and then looking to exploit various positions once they get everybody spread out. Sweep green around the right side, turns the corner, hits his foot in the ground, keeps his balance, touchdown Tigers. Another great run by green. When you see him get the edge clean like that, look out, yeah. probably gonna end up in the end zone. Absolutely, the running towards that right side, uh, blocker is able to set the blocks. I know right tackle, uh, Kedrian Brown, he was talking to me this week. He's a big fan of my, my commentating, so I wanna Thank him for that. So shout out Kedrian Brown. Uh, way to block there. Sing on for the PAT here. 27 nothing lead. Sing will boot that through as the third quarter clock has expired. So Conroe will take 28 nothing lead into the fourth as we reset the quarter here. Outstanding performance by Conroe here tonight leading 28 to love on the scoreboard. Yeah, and it really looks like that Dramico has kind of found his groove. As you know, we talked about earlier, he came back that New Caney game after missing three weeks, but he hadn't practiced that whole week. He was kind of just thrown in there. And when you have such a talented player, you obviously want to get him out there. But just, you know, that game against New Caney, he just cuts. He was kind of, you know, slipping on the, the turf a little bit. And so, but definitely that, that bye week helped him get, you know, acclimated back to the, you know, the team, the offense, and he's absolutely shining tonight. Yeah, he's doing what I remember seeing from him quite a bit last year with just that sudden quality and ability to make those big plays looking a lot like 
a couple of the other backs that we see in the district. You mentioned the guys from Oak Ridge earlier, DeBose and Arthur in green, I think is every bit on their level. Uh, just a really good big play threat back there and perfect for these modern shotgun type offenses where you're trying to stretch the defense horizontally and just get the slightest of cracks open so that you can exploit that. And a guy like him doesn't need much at all. Like just give him a little sliver to work with and he'll do the rest. Seeing with the ball down and ready to boot this one back. Will be returnable by Grand Oaks. And try the right side. What a hit. That was picture perfect. Unbelievable coverage there by the Tigers. That's can't do it any better than that. Trying to catch the number on who made that first contact yeah, I because think that, that was, was a beautiful play. Was that 19, I think that was 19, Keelan Harris, the junior. Uh, Keelan, also one of the people who has played on one of my YMCA basketball teams and baseball. He's a all-around athlete. A big hit there to prevent a big return for Grand Oaks. Yep, that'll get him on the goal sheet there for a first contact on special teams. Rollins comes back out here for Grand Oaks handoff up the middle. Try and push forward for a few yards. Good tough run. run around the right side most one of the more explosive plays of the night by Grand Oaks number 31 there Tristan Lemoyne a junior exploiting the space there just a good play Conroe had most of their defense stacked up within about five yards of the point of attack there and Lemoyne find, found that gap and then there was no one left to make the tackle once he got through and had to be run down yeah and that's one of the weaknesses we have seen from this this Connor defense throughout the season is you know the big run plays they give up been trying to keep up with Grand Oaks all night they've rotated in quite a few players so it can be tough to catch the changes sometimes out there getting a lot of guys experience and as you mentioned earlier in the game Sam ton of underclassmen on this roster guys gaining valuable reps to come back Next year, as Coach McDowell continues to put a stamp on this program, he's a newcomer to the north side of the town, uh, never coached up here before. He spent most of his career down in southwest Houston at Foster High School trying to bring some of that Fort Bend County swagger up here to the north side. Going to take time to get things developed where he wants them. But I've heard him in interviews and just a, a really impressive guy to listen to and feel like he'll be able to get some good things done at this program given the time to do so. It's with the location of the high school and the new subdivision growth immediately around it and just that room to expand you feel like the school's in a nice location to continue renewing itself for a while. Talked earlier in the broadcast about the challenges new schools have around the area the these days, Offense. especially in Houston, given you open a new high school and then it seems like the relief campus is going up within five to six years, like you see out in the Cadys and the Cypresses and Conroe ISD growing at a very rapid rate on its own. Nearly a really nice interception attempt there. Number 21 for Conroe, Mark Jones, the junior. He's the young buck out there in the secondary, but he's already got one pick tonight. 
Yeah. You know, they came down with an acrobatic second there. Yeah, trying to reel that, that ball in with the one hand. I'd like to encourage everyone on this broadcast to subscribe to our YouTube channels for the Wood Forest Bank Stadium in Moorhead. Grand Oaks punts this away. Field of Lede had to get on that. Grand Oaks may have that, actually. It's a tough one to catch. See if Grand Oaks, in fact, came up with it. They're signaling they have it, and they do. Grizzlies get something positive going their way, which they've sorely needed all night, and it finally happens. 9-10 left in the game. Yeah, we just saw this earlier from Grand Oaks. It's Yeah, giving one to the, Conroe. The punt yeah. returner. For both teams, just a little out of position there. Uh, misjudging the, the ball flight, and they're a little further away from the ball than where they wanted to be. Usually you want to be you know, right on top of that ball and just let it kind of you mm -hmm. know, drop into your arms. You don't really want to extend the arms and try to reel it in. That's when you have the potential, just like it happened here, to turn the ball over. Yep, it takes a, a special kind of player to be a punt returner. It's a, a pretty difficult job when you've got to look at a high ball and then people who want to hit you running right at you. Run up the middle, gain of about four. Not easy to keep your composure when you've got that kind of heat coming after you on those punts. Oh, right. Definitely not. You got the, the thread of somebody that could just light you up. Yeah, it's like for anyone who's played baseball, it's like imagine being an outfielder, but then several people want to come hit you when you're trying to catch the ball. Or if you're a catcher and there's a, a play at the plate. Yeah, play at the plate. And yeah, that's back probably the in the, uh, yeah. I know the olden days, that was a big more thing where you could just, you know, run to the catcher and try to make him drop it. But we've seen yeah. a decline in that yeah. over the years. Yeah, the poor catcher waiting on the, the ball from the outfield with the runner coming in trying to knock his block off. You can kind of see that in basketball, too, when a guy takes a charge. Shotgun two wide set for Rollins here. Fakes the handoff, rolling right. Pass to the flat, wide open and caught. Going to hit the Jets here up at the right sideline, inside the five, down to about the two-yard line. Roan Brawley on that catch. One of the tight ends on this team. Yeah, and he is just able to... Slip out of the uh, the backfield there. Uh, just man was not accounted for. Yep, run up the middle here. Going to be stacked up by Conroe. Pushed ahead, though. Going to be still short of the end zone on the one-yard line. Of course, we've not been able to see Ty Roop, one of the top recruits in the area for Grand Oaks yet this season, number 88. Been in street clothes on the sideline, unfortunately. The Look forward to, to seeing him back, hopefully, uh, next year playing Second again. Now. But, yeah, one of the, the top recruits and best football players and not only Connor ISD, but the state of Texas for his class. Again, it's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Conroe. Not going to make it easy for Grand Oaks to get that first touchdown. Yeah, absolutely not. Tate Trantham there. The first one to make contact there in the backfield, and that's a big TFL. Yep, one of the leaders on this Tiger defense. You know, he's been around for at least a couple of years here for Conroe. Just over six and a half minutes left in our game here tonight. Looking great for the Tigers here, but they got to finish closing things out here tonight. Rollins going to roll, throw wide open, Brawley, touchdown, Grand Oaks. First touchdown of the evening for the Grizzlies. They get in, they get that positive play that they've been sorely needing all night. Yeah, and that's a very similar play concept to the one where they had the 29-yard uh, pass. Yeah, just good design there. You get... Raleigh was leaked out in the flat, just wide open, easy pitch and catch, high percentage play by the offense. Good design, good call. Usually a safe kind of option to look for down in that position. Yeah, and Rollins coming back out to 
hold the snap. So he was out there, went to the sideline to go celebrate, but realized he's got to go out there for the PAT. Again, just nicely executed pass, easy dump into the flat, complete for that touchdown to Brawley. 28-6 lead for Conroe, 632 left in our game tonight. As mentioned a little earlier in the broadcast, the other district action going on here after our game concludes tonight will be Oak Ridge at College Park right back here tomorrow night. So I encourage you to tune in uh, to that broadcast and then elsewhere have New Caney at Cleveland and the Woodlands at Caney Creek. That'll be the, the Moorhead game tomorrow night. So tune in to that one as well. Again, the Woodlands trying to keep pace at the top of the district with Willis in order to set up that Titanic encounter that Sam and I will be on the call for next Thursday night. Really looking forward to that one. Willis has a bye week, so they'll have a full two weeks to prepare for that big game. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, what factors that could have when we come back here again next Thursday to resume that titanic battle for the 13-6-8 district championship. Yeah, and it's it's going to be a battle between what we've seen in this district as two immovable objects. You've got, in my opinion, the two best quarterbacks definitely in the district, definitely two top five quarterbacks in the state of Texas. Yep, two of the best in the state, and yeah, obviously if you're the best in Texas, then you're some of the best in the, the entire country as well. Lagway committed to Florida, and Matoyer for the Woodlands committed to Wisconsin. Both Willis and the Woodlands just been completely dominant in district this year, scoring by far the most points, not allowing a whole lot either, and they do things pretty similarly on mm -hmm. offense in that they attack the matchups on the perimeter and they exploit you with that air game given the talent of both quarterbacks. So that should be a very, very fun game to watch and should be one of our most viewed games on the channel all year. Yeah, what I'm really excited for is to see how that Willis defense holds up because that's, you know, we talk about how great the Willis offense is with DJ Lagway, but this this is a Willis defense that's a little bit underlooked. They are uh, – you know, first in the district in, in yards given up, and they've they've really been unstoppable, only given up, on average, 61 yards, rushing yards per game and 82 passing yards per game. Yeah, and that's a really good point on them. They've been outstanding all around this year. Nunley under heavy pressure, escapes, runs around the right side again. He's got such gliding speed. He just looks like a guy that could run track the way he just glides and gets a first down out of not a whole lot there just because of that speed once he gets the legs moving just eats up a lot of ground kind of floats over the surface looks like he could run a mean 200 empty backfield or not empty backfield, but four receivers. Now fakes the handoff over the middle. Strike completed for the first down. Zachary Allen. Yep, Zach Allen brings that one down. Again, spread people wide and then run that slant underneath. Hit that opening. Nunley for a guy that's missed. Quite a bit of time looking pretty sharp here tonight. This green's going to take that handoff, looking for space. Late flag coming in from behind. Holding. Holding. 68 off it. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Connor High's remaining schedule after tonight is Cleveland and then College Park to wrap up the regular season. Tiger fans should be rooting very hard for Oak Ridge tomorrow night. If College Park were to beat Oak Ridge tomorrow, then they're in, which is obviously bad news for Connor High, and that would eliminate any remaining chance they have of getting in if that happens. Empty backfield for the Tigers. Champagne catches it in the flat hit right away. 
Going to be close to a first down, or close to the original line of scrimmage, rather. Bring up second 12. Shotgun four wide, two by two set. Nunley's going to look to the sideline. Make sure he's in the best play. Back to pass, left sideline. And telegraph the throw a little bit, almost picked off. Yeah, dangerous. It's very fortunate that Grand Oaks defender wasn't able to yeah. get his hands in there to pick that off because. Yeah. If he did, we might be talking. Yeah, pick six potentially. Yeah. Uh, Braylon Carr on the coverage there. Number zero for the Grizzlies. Great job of anticipation. Four wide set again trips here to the near side. Straight drop for Nunley. Now he's got to escape. <laughs> Makes nifty footwork easily. Picks up the first down and more all the way inside the red area. Great job to read that pressure and that see that opening by Nunley and again just the athletic quality yeah, taking over. Jaw dropping. He jukes a defender there right at the line of scrimmage and is able to pick up the first down and more there. And when you can do that as a quarterback, man. Yep, hand off right side on the power play. Going to pick up about four yards. Timeout. Offense. Sam, I didn't catch this Conroe team in non-district, but I imagine this is kind of how they looked when they opened the season so yeah. positively with, with everybody healthy. Yeah, definitely. I've seen and watched every Conroe game. I've called all the ones I could have called, and then I went up to Willis to see him play. And, you know, they looked really good uh, in the non-district play, not allowing more than 10 points in those games. And, you know, having Christian Nunley and Jermico Green and Nigel Lede all healthy, it's, you know, that's what's been a big factor for them. So having these guys back, especially for this late playoff push run that they could possibly have, it's big, very big. Yep, absolutely. And, yep, for Conroe, they'll, again, be rooting for that help. They need to just keep themselves in the conversation while just – doing everything they can to control what's right in front of them, which is, of course, first this result here tonight and then let everything else fall into place as it will. Yeah, and you, you definitely know that's going to be the message from, from Coach Hardman is to, you know, really just focus on your, our, yourselves, you know, do, you know, I remember I talked to him once and he's like, his main idea is do the things that you can control. There's some things that you, you can't control and one of those is uh, – you know, cheering for another team. So, yeah, exactly. Do what you can control, win the games you play, and hope it pans out for you. Yep, hope for the best. Be an empty backfield here for Nunley when we resume play here in a second. Motion into the backfield, Champagne. Flare him out now, going to go right back to him. Pass is caught. Can't quite make the defender miss. Going to be down by about the eight-yard line. Just over four minutes left in the game tonight. Conroe looking to put this one away. Four wide receivers set here for Nunley. Trips to the top. It's going to roll that way. Looking for a flat. Has Lede wide open. Touchdown, Tigers. Nice execution there. Had it pop wide open just the way they wanted. Nigel Lede with his second touchdown of the evening. Yeah, Nunley able to roll out to... His left, and which is usually the harder throw to make when you're 
you know, cross body throw to the yeah, back end zone, but just right floated it perfectly right into Lede's hands. Yeah, so lefty always like giving righty guys a hard time about the way they throw the ball moving left. I feel like lefties are more natural throwing yeah. going to the right. But I am highly biased. Yeah, just perfectly thrown ball dropped in the bucket there for Lede. Easy pitch and catch. They made it look easy rather. So 3.36 to go, Connor High leading 35-6. to six. You know, many of you on the broadcast, you're watching this live, you're probably flipping back and forth, or you've got two screens going, hopefully, mm -hmm. with the Astros game on the other one. So go Astros. Hope they can get the job done here yeah, tonight. Tie that series day. up. 9-3 Astros now. Take it. Keep so. it going. Board on. Good performance out of them so far. And my sister-in-law and her entire side of the family are from the Dallas area, so a little bit of banter going back and forth. Singh has the ball down, ready to boot it deep once again. Tigers leading 35-6, working to close this one out here tonight and take another win moving forward here in district, be the second district win for Conroe. It's going to go into the end zone, touchback. Oh, there we go. Barely. Kind of seemed like the ball didn't want to go into the end zone there. Grand Oaks can start on their own 25 here. See if it's still Rollins at the QB position or if they go back to the sophomore here on this drive. You mentioned earlier they'd been platooning Braylon, uh, Braden Dawson with Rollins at the QB position. Both underclassmen. Corey Mack now a senior in at quarterback for Grand Oaks, so the third QB of the evening. Gets a completed pass on his first play, so good result there. Pass completed out to number 38, Austin Zambrano, another senior. Good to see those guys hooking up on senior night here tonight under the lights at Wood Forest. Yeah, definitely want to get those guys in there. It's their last home game as their last game is at Cleveland. Yep, last chance in front of the home fans on senior night in front of the parents, you know that's special. Just knowing the work that it takes as a former high school student and player myself and just all the, the work these guys put in to get to this point, a real sacrifice made by the parents and families to get their kids through the high school years. And I can guarantee you they're all working the same at practice, putting in the same blood, sweat, and tears behind the scenes. Yeah, everybody, the band. Yeah, absolutely. The band would always be out there same time practicing in the heat of July and August with the football team. Wow. Oh, nice nifty pass to the sideline completed to number 81, Nicholas Hill, a, a senior. So the seniors out here just getting it done late for the Grizzlies. Trying to get the footwear back on. They want to hurry this thing up. They're like, we want to get as many plays in as we can. Like, we've been waiting all night to get out here. It's a hand into the running back. Nice space up the middle. And trying to keep up with all the updates as players come in. It's Aiden Dorman now at the quarterback position. A junior, another underclassman. 
just how many quarterbacks do they have? It's the fourth one of the game. It cannot be a first down run. Jesse Rogers on that carry, another senior getting some action out here. Good job to run physical and move those chains. Ball gonna be spotted on the 38 yard line of Conroe. Run up the middle, and plow forward for a few yards before he is stopped. It's Rogers again on that carry. Yep, we have 65 seconds left here in this ball game. And Grand Oaks trying to yep, be the last team to score. Yep, one more snap will probably do it here tonight unless they just want to get real aggressive here. Be stacked up at the line by Conroe High. And in the district standings, as mentioned, Conroe will move to two and four in district play. Grand Oaks will drop to two and five. And Grand Oaks will only have the one game remaining against Cleveland to close out their season. After this loss tonight, no chance for the Grizzlies to get into the postseason. Another run up the middle and that'll do it as the clock will tick down the remaining seconds. The Conroe Tigers gonna take a big 35 to six win away from Wood Forest Bank Stadium tonight is the road team. Yep, first road win for the Tigers on the season. Yep, big win for Coach Hardeman and company over there on that sideline. Keep themselves alive another week, and yep, we'll see what else unfolds in 13-6A play this weekend and how the picture may or may not change going into those just huge games next week, headlined by none other than that Woodlands and Willis game that we've been talking about, and Sam and I will be back with you next week for that broadcast. We thank you for joining us here tonight. Sam, it was another fun one. I hope you enjoyed it, man. No, it was great. Uh, really excited for next week. Uh, should be a classic game. And make sure you tune in to the games tomorrow. Uh, we'll have College Park versus Oak Ridge here at 7 o'clock here at Wood Forest. Yeah, absolutely. Good slate of games coming up this weekend. And appreciate all of you joining us on the broadcast tonight. Again, subscribe to both the channels for Wood Forest Bank Stadium and Moorhead. Like the videos. Hit that subscribe button. I am Jeremy McGrill for, uh, for Sam Ulrich, and we will see you next time.